Alexa did not see this one coming. An 8th new card for the Dragoonity structure deck. 8 new cards in a structure deck, that's a ludicrous amount of new cards. But I guess what else is ludicrous is the fact that without this, the deck would have not been competitively viable. And that's pretty crazy for a structure deck because structure decks are designed to be low level entries into high level competitive play. So this would have been a failed product without this. But I think this card pushes it over the edge of relevancy. So yeah, Shpuno Dragoonity kind of reminds me of The art features ducks and Ascalon in the back. I'm guessing what's happening here is this is showing the creation of Ascalon from all of the Dragoonity tuners. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyways, it's a quick play spell card, hard once per turn. Now as we know, hard once per turns with quick play spell cards are essentially hard twice per turns because you can use one on your turn and one on their turn as opposed to normal spells which you can only use on your turn. Although since we don't have a way to keep recycling this it's not going to be as busted as Salomon Great Circle. But yeah the restriction is if only your opponent controls a monster. Now I'm quite annoyed with this restriction as a recurring theme for all of the new Dragoonity cards. It's a very outdated restriction here. Now, this is very similar to Onslaught of the Fire Kings, which is also a quick play spell with this restriction and a very similar effect. And that's like a 2014 level card or something. Like how outdated can you be, right? You can only summon dragons from your extra deck for the rest of the turn. Now this next restriction here is kind of irrelevant because you were probably locked into that by Senatus or Remus anyways. And since it's a quick play card, you can simply play around this restriction by flipping it during the end phase of your opponent's turn. With all of that out of the way, you summon one Dragoonity Tuner and one Wing Beast Dragoonity monster from your deck with their effects negated. If they control a extra deck special summon monster, then immediately after this resolves you can synchro summon using only Dragoonity monsters you control. So yeah, it summons from deck, that immediately makes it a really good card, that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh works. Again, this card tackles one of Dragoonity's main problems, which is being unable to play through disruption. So this is a very good card for going second and playing through fields. It essentially allows Dragoonity to make three plays per turn, one being your normal summon, one being the Remus and Legata's play, and the third one being this card. Going first, however, you're still limited to just two plays since it's very hard to pull this off going first. The only feasible situation where I see this being used going first is against something like a Cypher and Gear Gamma. But yeah, generally going first, you can still only play through one hand trap with the deck. But yeah, it might become more and more relevant going first as time goes on as hand traps that summon themselves gets released or if there's more ways of emptying your own field that could also make this slightly better going first. Now this card is quite interesting. It kind, it's kind of the opposite of Senatus where Senatus requires you to run as many Dragoonity cards as possible for it to consistently be able to discard a Dragoonity and get its effect off. This card goes in a, the opposite direction which is you want to run as few Dragoonities as possible as you can get away with with this one card starter. I think this card apart from using it in a traditional combo heavy Dragoonity deck as a recovery card or a backup card or a board breaking card you could it also opens up to very trap heavy builds where you run a minimal Dragoonity lineup and it really allows for much easier siding because with Senatus, if you drop below a certain amount of Dragoonity cards in your deck, it's going to be unable to consistently trigger its effect. But yeah, for a trap heavy deck, this also sets up your tuners and grave. For a combo heavy deck, you probably already have tuners and grave, but it helps set up more tuners and grave, which is very beneficial to Barker. So yeah, I'm pretty interested on seeing how a build like that might play out with this card. As for the quick synchro effect, 
A traditional Dragoonity deck is not going to have many options apart from the innate level 6 Dragoonity Synchros. All you have is really Red Wyvern and Orient Dragon. Both are quite conditional disruption cards. Although pretty cool because if they live their level 6 dragons for you to make a tomb with or climb into level 8 Synchros or level 10 Synchros with. If you choose to run a level 3 Tuna or a level 5 Winged Beast you get access to 7s which have much better disruptive cards like Moonlight Rose on your opponent's turn, Black Rose on your opponent's turn, Clear Wing, Fast Wing are also alright. Although you do run the risk of drawing your level 3 Tuna or your level 5 Wing Beast, which are not very good cards. Uh, as for the level 8, and technically you can make 3s, 4s and 5s, there's really not many things there to talk about. Yeah, the the thing I like most about this card is they didn't put a restriction on what you can do with the two monsters you summon. So you can synchro with them, you can link with them, you can attack with them and then do something with them in the main phase too. You can even choose to do nothing with them. So given the amount of bullshit restrictions on these new Dragoonity cards, that was a very pleasant surprise on not having restrictions in that front. But yeah, this card definitely makes me much more excited to play the deck since I know I can take it to like a regionals or something and play it without the complete expectation of scrubbing.